Six o'clock news starts right now. And we begin tonight with some alarming numbers from the San Antonio Fire Department. There were 12 fatal fires in San Antonio last year, and this year there have already been five of them. Jesse Degollado tells us what three of the latest fires all had in common. The year began with a man in his 80s dying from smoke inhalation and burns in the fire that consumed his west side home. Less than two weeks later, another fire. That one on Brightwood Place. One woman died and her husband suffered smoke inhalation, despite efforts by neighbors to alert them. Since then, there have been two fatal fires in the city and another in the county in the last three days. It's frustrating, it's heartbreaking that these fatalities that we've seen this week have all been preventable. Earlier this week, a 67-year-old woman died in her home on the north side. The cause, says Arrington, smoking in bed. Early Tuesday morning fire was caused by um, improperly discarded smoking items. About 1 a.m. Thursday, another woman died in a fire on the east side. A man was badly burned. The reason, says Arrington? It was a space heater that fell over. Sandwiched between those two fires, there was one in West Bear County. The victim's body wasn't immediately found. First responders had to fight not only the fire, but also the clutter inside the house. It's just a, a horrible set of circumstances that occur and in, in a situation like that, it begins to cascade and just get worse. When it comes to fires, they say the older population and the mobility impaired could be the ones less likely to escape. But here's the awful truth. Fire does not discriminate. Unfortunately, everyone is at risk. Yet if they act on the advice detailed on firesafesa.com, they could reduce the risk. Have a plan. Practice those escape routes. Make sure everyone is doing what they can to stay safe. Planning for the worst case scenario could save your life. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. We have an update now on a traffic crash along 1604 and Medio Creek in far west Bear County. We first told you about this at five o'clock as breaking news. This is a live look at that scene right now. The sheriff's office tells us that this crash involved two 18 wheelers in the southbound lanes. Two people were being checked for injuries at this scene. Now, right now, all southbound lanes from West Loop 1604 and Petrenko to Marbach Road are closed. Traffic is being rerouted to West Military. Tonight, suspension records reveal a veteran San Antonio police officer suspended after making sexual comments towards a female officer. Officer Esteban Herrera was suspended one month in November of last year, months after the female officer suggested Herrera should no longer ride with females. Suspension paperwork states he made numerous inappropriate comments toward that female officer. Herrera suspended on November 29th. His suspension paperwork was released just this week. He served his suspension from January 3rd to February 1st. Herrera has been with SAPD since February of 2006. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers hoping that some new photos will help them find a couple of bar shooting suspects. Take a look here. These men are accused of shooting people outside the El Ojo Bar on St. Mary's and East Woodlawn Avenue. That happened January 23rd. Police say around 2.20 that morning, the men got into an argument with another group. They took that outside. That's where investigators say the suspects pulled out a gun and shot the victims. If you recognize them or have any information that could help investigators, call 210-224-STOP. She was on her way home when she was shot and killed. Today marks the 10-year anniversary of that San Antonio woman's shooting death. Consuelo Reynosa was shot and killed during a drive-by shooting and still no answers for the family as far as who did it. Jaffney Gray met with her sister today, who says she is not giving up hope, even after all these years. What do you miss the most about her? Her laugh. Mm -hmm. We used to just always, always laugh. It's hard. A laugh that Valerie Coronado hasn't heard for 10 years now. Her sister Consuelo Reynosa, or Connie, was gunned down alongside her boyfriend, Jesse Rodriguez, while driving along Fresno. The couple was only 21 years old. I'll never forget that day we got that call. Since then, life has been a struggle for the family. I'll just lock myself in a room all day and stay in the dark. And it's because it's like, it just, every day it crosses my mind, like who, where, what, why? 
I ask God every day, why her? Why such an innocent person? Now at the 10 year anniversary of this tragic shooting, Reynosa's case is still unsolved with no leads in sight. And I know somebody has to know something, even if they think it's the littlest thing, you, ne you never know, it might just break the case. At the time of the shooting, Reynosa's children were just two and four years old. Despite not having many memories of their mother, the now 12 and 14 year olds know one thing is for certain. Their mom loved them so much. The family used to hold memorials in this very location. Reynosa stopped her car after being shot. No matter how long it's been, going says she has faith that justice will one day be served. If you're out there, whoever you are, please find it in your heart to give yourself up. San Antonio police is still searching for any information that can lead to the arrest of the person responsible for taking the life of Reynosa. They're asking you to send your tips to Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. On the northwest side, Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. And now to the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Today, Metro Health is reporting just over 900 new cases and six more people have also died. Meanwhile, there are currently 840 COVID-19 patients in Bear County hospitals. That's down from a day ago. More than 200 of them are in the intensive care units and more than 100 are on ventilators. Governor Greg Abbott and former Congressman Beto O'Rourke both in San Antonio today, both making appearances within just minutes of each other and both talking about the Texas power grid. O'Rourke criticized the governor for not doing enough to require the state's power sources to be winterized. That's of course after millions of people were left in the dark and the cold during the winter freeze a year ago. But Governor Abbott today said that he has signed 14 laws since then to better protect the grid. And he believes that business growth in Texas since that storm signals that companies have faith in the state's power systems. We set an all time record for the number of businesses that actually moved their headquarters to the state of Texas. Not only was it an all time record, it was almost double. When you live in and are the governor of the energy capital of the world and you cannot keep the lights on in a winter storm, that is not good for business either, right? Now the two have to get through the March primary, of course, before going head to head. Election day in those primaries, March 1st, but early voting starts on Monday. You can find a sample ballot and more on KSAT.com. And as Myra just said, early voting for the March primaries does begin on Monday. And right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know before heading to the polls. You can find your polling locations, changes made since the last election, as well as sample ballots. For more information, just go to our website or scan the QR code that you see on your screen. A $1.2 billion bond program is headed to San Antonio City voters for their approval. With the exception of one absent councilman, the City Council today unanimously approving the final list of projects this morning, and that will appear on your May 7th ballot. City Hall reporter Garrett Berger breaks down some of the highlights. Motion carries. We have an election. Eric. After months of deliberation, including a committee review process, 10 yes votes from the city council to send the bond to you in the form of six propositions ranging from streets to parks to affordable housing. These projects, these 180 plus projects are critical projects for the city. So what are those projects? To name a few, over 103 million for the Greenway Trail system, over 100 million to repair the city's worst streets and a brand new police substation on the south side. 1.5% of the bond, excluding the housing portion, will go towards public art. The streets and drainage propositions will take up more than half of the $1.2 billion price tag. The big takeaway for me uh, on this bond is that we are uh, advancing the very basics uh, of our community, you know, streets, sidewalks, drainage priorities uh, better than we have in any previous bond cycle. For the first time, the bond will include an affordable housing portion, $150 million aimed at helping the city's most vulnerable low income populations. Housing is health, stability, safety, and overall a human right. Despite its record size, there's a lot that still didn't make the cut. The city's infrastructure needs alone would take more than five bonds of this size. 
though officials point out that this bond also leverages another $269 million from other sources. We're able to move our, our community's priorities much farther along uh, and get more for every dollar than I, I think most any community you would find. Now it's up to voters to decide if the council-approved project list is worth it. If you want more information on what's in the bond, you can head to our website. We have a project list there. The city manager says they also hope to put out a brochure sometime in the next week and a half. At City Hall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. KSAT 12's Let's Rodeo San Antonio, powered by your best in Texas Ford dealers. Oh, it is here. One of the most popular events in the rodeo is without a doubt mutton busting and it's a whole lot of fun to say only eight kids compete during each performance mutton busting <laughs> alicia brera is live right now from the mutton busted way intense alicia well this event has been going on for more than 20 years can you believe that at least this year they got over 1500 entries nationwide and again only eight today nine kiddos you see them here they'll be the stars of the show for mutton bustin lucas alexander is actually one of them he's going to get weighed in over here inside the tent so this is how it starts you guys this is the behind the scenes this little one he is i believe five years old um, and this age group is four to seven. They have to be under 55 pounds. They get weighed in, and then the next step is gonna be the vest. And then after that, they get their helmet, and that's how they get ready. Miss Tinker, Miss Barbara Kelso, she's been helping with this event for years now. What's the most popular question that the kids ask? The most popular question they ask is, how do I get off the sheet? And I always tell them the same, same answer is, just naturally it'll come to you, because they usually fall, and we don't wanna tell them that, it'll scare them. Absolutely. But Mr. Lucas over here, he tells me that he's not scared, that he's actually gotten some practice at home because he has two great Danes, and he got inspired after he saw his sister compete last year. Hey, Lucas, how excited are you to mutton bus this year? I don't know. Tell me about your sister last year. My sister, um... Well, we wish you the best of luck, cowboy. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little shy there, you guys, but we wish them all the best of luck. Nine contestants this year, and you can, of course, watch that. There will be the third event this rodeo season. Back to you guys. I love that. His sister, Lucas practiced on the great yeah. deans at home. <laughs> and his sister left everyone speechless last year, yeah, obviously, obviously, with her performance. That's fantastic. Okay, coming up at 7 o'clock, thank you, Alicia, by the way, Ursula Perry and David Sears will show you what's happening on the rodeo grounds, including live interviews with tonight's rodeo event winners. We'll have a live preview of tonight's rodeo special with David and Ursula coming up in our second half hour. Our rodeo special starts right after this newscast. And we have a programming note to tell you about due to our rodeo special tonight. The NFL honors will air early Friday morning at 1.05 a.m. The Jeopardy National College Championship will follow that airing at 3 a.m. We're not done at the rodeo yet. Though. No, we are not. We're just getting started. What a beautiful night to be out there. Perfect weather to kick things off at the Freeman Coliseum grounds. Yeah, let's check in with our Adam Kasky. Live from, are you still in the swine? No, oh, he's oh. moved on to cows, oh, cattle barn. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, with some heifers, and I'm with uh, Caroline here, sweet Caroline. She uh, sniffing me out and uh, leaving some marks on my jeans. Oh, hello, yes. We've been bonding and getting along. I've been getting a little closer, too. Flopsy, Flopsy over here. We've been spending some time together. Yes, you, Flopsy. We're going to chat with some of the kids here that have been uh, raising some of the cattle and we got some steers behind us there. I do you want to point out the aquifer is up a little bit again today. We're three and a half feet below the February average. Mountain cedar jumped again today. We're almost, sorry, yes, I'll give you more pets. We're almost at the end of mountain cedar season, but it just spiked today high. It should be very brief. We're going to talk about the cold front that's going to hit us. It ain't no rodeo without a cold front. See you in a bit. I'm Stefania Jimenez, and here's what we're working on for you tonight on the Night Beat. We're talking a vacation that turned into a nightmare. Those guests were offered a quiet place to stay in the hill country, but then they learned the cabin they were in had a hidden camera. Investigators uncovered video of guests in their most vulnerable moments, and tonight the defenders speak with the attorney for some of the victims and the lawyer representing the person who's accused of hiding that camera. 
Also today, San Antonio City Council hit a fork in the road as it considers the future of one of our roadways. Some knew it as Old Highway 90, then it became Enrique Embarrera Parkway, but that name appears to be changing once more. We're going to clear up all the confusion that is tonight on the Night Beat. We'll see you then. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Let's take a look outside with Sky 12 over the carnival at the rodeo as things are kicking off. You know, and Adam Kasky is not a guy who's all hat and no cattle. <laughs> not at all, Adam. <laughs> we're, we're having a great time here. We're in the cattle barn and I'm here with I'm here with the ladies with the heifers having a, it's heifers, right, Addy? OK, I just want to make sure I get it right. You know, I'm still learning around here, but there's some sweet uh, this is Dolly here, and I know it's dinner time, so they're kind of like, hey, buddy, come on, give me some, give me some space here. And check out the calf. This is um, Louis. Louis's a month and a half. I mean, you look at that, compare that to a uh, human month and a half year old. Mind blowing, isn't it? All right, we're going to get to the weather because we do have a cold front coming our way. Then we're going to chat with Addie, who's been uh, raised. I don't want to get too close to the business end. I'm going to go over a little this way. <laughs> we're going to chat with Addie, who's been raising uh, the, the cattle. 39 this morning, so we had a chill in the air. Then by the afternoon, we topped out at 72 degrees. A good temperature spread, if you ask me. A little below average in the morning, above average in the afternoon. And you look at temperatures all across our area, for the most part, 60s to right near 70 degrees. I mean, Pleasanton 71, you have the 60s in the hill country. It's comfortable. Temperatures fall off quickly, of course, in this type of weather pattern. Clear sky, calm wind, and dry air. Dew points. They're down, 20s, 30s. So we still have that dry air in place. And you're not going to notice any humidity until about the middle part of next week. I think by Wednesday, just a little hint of mugginess briefly back in the air. All right, let's go full screen, talk about what's coming down the pike because we do have a cold front. And that cold front's going to hit a Saturday morning. So we go from 75 tomorrow down to 58 for the high on Saturday. So to plan for Saturday, basically just 50s all day long and gusty. That's what we're anticipating. And I want to talk about the big picture overall. We do have a cold front that, that's headed our way. And that cold front, right now it's in basically in the Northland, Upper Midwest. Drive, dropping southward. It's going to hit us early Saturday morning before sunrise. Everybody's going to wake up and think, Whoo, where'd that wind come from? It's screaming down the plains and it's headed our way. Could kickstart a stray shower, but mostly it's going to be windy. Take a look at the wind forecast. We're talking 40 mile per hour gusts on Saturday with the cooler temperatures. As for this evening, oh, beautiful. It is beautiful. Comfortable, clear sky, near 50 by midnight comfortable all evening and night here in the barns. We'll start the day tomorrow at 42, by the afternoon 75, even up to about 77 in Elmendorf, 73 Timberwood Park, New Braunfels about 75 for your high temperature. Then we're in the 50s on Saturday, windy, but we'll have some sunshine. And again, stray shower, sprinkle, nothing to plan around. And then we get into Sunday, nothing but sunshine and it's back to same old, same old, what we've been experiencing, and that's going to last into the early part of next week. There are some indications we could have some rain toward the middle to end of next week. We're not getting our hopes too high right now. Addy, oh, senior in high school, you've been doing this in seventh grade. You started with how many? One. <laughs> and now you I you have, uh, we ran about 20 head on our, on our place, so we've got quite a few. <laughs> From one to a herd. That's what you've, so in that time, how have you grown? Like, what have you learned from this? What have you taken away? Um, so definitely, like, when you're in middle school, you don't know what your passion is or um, what you're going to do with your life or anything like that. And you definitely are learning responsibility and stuff like that. So um, I think this has definitely taught me how to take care of stuff that's yeah. not myself. <laughs> and then definitely I've grown um, a lot as a person and this is now my passion. I found what my passion is and I awesome. plan to do this forever. So. Awesome. I love what you know, good luck on Sunday. Sunday, right? Yes, sir. Good luck. All right. Good luck. Oh, it's so good having you here. All right. We're going to be back. We're going to travel around a little bit more. We'll see you next half hour from probably another barn, maybe somewhere else. I know we have other calves around as well. We'll see you then. Good luck to Addie and say hello to Dolly, by the way. There you go. Thank hello. You.
Dolly. Yeah. All right, so let's <laughs> talk about the Spurs right now. I have never seen a trade deadline where the Spurs have been this active, Larry. Very active. Uh, Spurs general manager Brian Wright making some moves today and in the process getting some draft picks to help the Spurs down the line. And one of those guys he traded away today, Derek White, plus the Medina Valley girls basketball team is coming off a fantastic regular season coming up. I mean, it's a business end of the day, and whatever they feel is right, they're going to do. That was Derek White yesterday at morning shoot around, and then some 25 hours later, he's been traded in big board sports. The Spurs made moves before the NBA trade deadline today, sending their starting two guard Derek White to the Boston Celtics for guards Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford and a top four protected 2022 first round selection. Now before that today, the Spurs traded Thaddeus Young and Drew Eubanks to the Raptors for guard Goran Dragic and another protected first round pick in this year's draft. The Spurs are expected to buy out Dragic. All told, the Spurs have picked up three first round draft picks in the 2022 NBA draft. That's awesome but telling players that they're on the move isn't easy for Coach Pop. It's a horrible time. Uh, it's, you know, I don't know what, this is a tough time and then training camp's a tough time because you always have to end up telling somebody that they need to do something else for a living. And that's difficult to do. And here, you know, you're with players and if changes are made, uh, that's always a tough conversation. So uh, I'm always happy when the training camp part is over and when the trade deadline comes. Spurs will continue the rodeo road trip tomorrow night, 630 at the Hawks. Turning to girls high school basketball, the Medina Valley Panthers are ready to make a deep playoff run now that they've wrapped up their second straight district championship. The Panthers finished the regular season 22 and 10 overall and undefeated in District 28-58, 14-0. As defending district champs, they were the ones to beat this season, but they fought off the competition and pushed their district winning streak to 30 games in a row. Claiming back-to-back -back district titles is an amazing feeling. I mean, it feels great. I mean, this is what our coach has been telling us since the beginning of last year. I mean, even my freshman year, he's been like, I want to be district champs. And that only leads to like these two years. And I feel like getting that, it's really cool for us. It means a lot to us because we've been together since eighth grade and we've like waited for this our whole high school career to play together. And it just, it's really amazing to win district both years with the people you've, you've grown up with. Winning two in a row, I just, solidifies how, how good of a team that we can play together or we can be as a team. It just feels really good. Chemistry means so much in basketball. Yes, you still have to score points and defend, but having chemistry and being a very close as a team can make a huge difference. The Panthers are very tight as a squad and believe that bond will help them advance past the second round of the playoffs where their run ended last season. We've all played together for so long. We know we're a veteran team. There's half of us that are seniors, and so we've been playing together for a long time. And our connection and our trust in each other is just there. Just family, like we all love each other. It's just really being together and motivating each other and that we all are equally competitive and we all love to win. So that just <laughs> everything about that, just we all click. It's amazing. We've just been together for so long, we know how everyone plays, we can kind of work around, we know everyone, we know all of our faults, we know all of our strengths, so we know where to position ourselves on the court. Coach Russell and the Medina Valley Panthers will face Lanier in the first round of the playoffs this coming Tuesday the 15th, 7 p.m. at Medina Valley High School. Big time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Our Q&A up next. We're once again getting the biggest COVID questions answered today with Dr. Ruth Berggren, infectious disease specialist with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. Dr. Berggren, thank you for being here as always. Uh, let's start with boosters because we're getting a better picture of how many people in San Antonio have gotten a booster shot or have not. Tell us where we are and where we should be. Yes, well, today the San Antonio Metro Health Department told us that we're only at about 35% of people in San Antonio who could get a booster that have had it. Only a third, a little more than a third. This is not good because all of the information we're getting from around the world suggests that while these vaccines do protect against Omicron, they don't do so well protecting us from infectious 
and symptoms if we haven't had a booster. So this is a graphic that shows how many, what proportion of people in San Antonio are still very vulnerable to infection because they haven't had the booster shot. And it's no big deal to get the booster. It's the same experience that you had for your first and second doses. And there's no worse side effects um, after a booster than there were after the second dose. Does this number surprise you, doctor? It does, because I, I would think that the folks that uh, went all the, to all the trouble of standing in line and getting their first dose and then showing up for their second dose, um, you would think that they now have the confidence that it's okay to get vaccinated. And so if you really want to be protected, you need to come in and get your booster, which should be done at least five months after your second dose. That's a question we're getting a lot. When is the booster? The booster should be done five months after your second dose of either of the two mRNA vaccines. Is it inevitable that we're gonna see a fourth dose come down? And, and, and should people be getting their fourth dose right now? There's no guideline for fourth doses unless you're a very immunocompromised person. Let me talk about that for a minute. People who are undergoing chemotherapy for a tumor or who have blood cancer or who are severely immunocompromised by virtue of either a disease or medicine that they take, those people really need three initial doses. We call it dose one, dose two, and dose three, and then they can get a booster after that. We are still awaiting any guidelines for non-immunocompromised people to get a fourth dose. And the day, the jury is out on that, so stay tuned. It may be that there will be a more Omicron-specific vaccine in our future. And so I wouldn't jump the gun and get the fourth dose before the guidance comes out saying that's what you need to do. Our positivity rate case numbers, overall numbers are declining, but the positivity rate still over 25%. And at one time, I remember when that was very high. Yeah for us. So, so many people have been affected by Omicron. So it may be a good time to talk about when you can get a booster or for those who still need the vaccine. If you have been infected, when can you get that shot? Okay. The question of if you have been infected or you are infected, when can you get your shot is a really good one. People seem to be confused about it. As soon as you're better from your COVID infection, you can go and get your shot. You do not have to wait 90 days. We ask that you not be infectious, that meaning that you should have completed your isolation, you shouldn't have fever. But as soon as that's over with, you should come and get your vaccine. There's no harm in getting it uh, as soon as your COVID infection is now uh, over and you're no longer symptomatic. So uh, to review again with boosters and timing of all that, because people do keep asking these questions, your, after your first dose, your second one should be 21 or 28 days after the first one, whether you're Pfizer or Moderna. And then uh, there's five month interval between your second dose and your booster shot. I, talk about masking. There's been some um, some of the mask mandates, especially on some of the some of the East Coast states have gone away. What is the masking guideline now, especially if you're indoor? So as, let's talk about San Antonio, you know, where our community positivity rate is still over 25%. Um, we, we do this other metric where we look at the number of positive cases per 100,000 people. We're at um, 124 per 100,000 people. That's really high. In that setting, people should be wearing the best possible mask they can find. That means a KN95 or an N95 or a surgical mask, not a cloth face covering. Wear the best mask you can get. Wear it whenever you're indoors around other people that aren't part of your family and certainly wear it when you're in crowded indoor places. So we still have a high community positivity rate. People in San Antonio should still be wearing the best masks they can find until we can get that positivity rate down lower. And by that, I mean less than 10% and ideally less than 5%.
you know, we've gotten used to hearing the term, uh, let's get out of this pandemic and, and live with COVID when it's endemic. Is that something that you feel like we're any closer towards or are we still very much in this pandemic phase? I think we're still in the pandemic phase. And again, to the people who say, let's just get COVID and get it over with, we're seeing really unacceptably high rates of long COVID, long haul COVID symptoms that are causing people to have brain fog and fatigue and muscle aches and just not functioning very well. Uh, this is no fun. We're seeing men who have infertility after getting COVID infection, which is not the case after vaccination. So it's much better to get vaccinated than to suffer from these long COVID uh, consequences. Still keep, need to keep our guard up Thank and you. our masks up. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ruth Bergen, infectious disease doctor from UT Health San Antonio. Thank you, Ruth. We'll see you next time and we'll be right back. It is the opening night of the San Antonio Rodeo, and we are very excited to be bringing you the Rodeo live tonight, starting at 7 o'clock. Yeah, just a few minutes away, really. We have got Katie Blake, who is at the studio with us, who is also very ready to rodeo. <laughs> yes, very excited. She's not on the grounds yet. Not yet. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Hope to be heading out there a little bit later. Uh, very excited and very excited that we have such cooperative weather this time of year. You never know. I recall, you know, I've just been here for five years, but I recall some very nice rodeo days and also some very cold yes. rodeo days. And we will have a chilly day coming up on Saturday. That's because that's when our next cold front arrives. So let's jump into your forecast. I want to start you off with temperatures currently uh, very comfortable out there right now. We're mid 60s at the airport. We still have some spots uh, a little bit closer to 70 right now, 74 Del Rio and 72 in Catula. We'll get to your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. All right, he's met Caroline, Flopsy, Dolly at this point. Where is Adam Kasky at the rodeo? Yeah, and it's <laughs> Thermometer Thursday on the road, Dio. Oh, I hey. see what you see. Yeah. Hey. hey, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I got to admit. You know what I love? So I, I kind of like the, cha the chaotic areas. <laughs> Come to the petting farm the petting farm area and one thing i love about the sign out for hey buddy one thing i love about the sign out front it says welcome everyone from the young to the young at heart i connect with that sign out front what nobody's around me right now hey watch how easy this is hey, hey, hey. oh yeah you want to now you want to make a friend don't you yes you do all right come on oh Hogging it all. That's okay. There's more where that came from. All right. Well, let's get into the forecast really quick. I think we have just enough space here before they all come, come flocking back at us. I, 39 this morning, 72 this afternoon, below average to start, above average later on in the day. High temperatures across the state, 60s, 70s. And that's where we were this afternoon. Now we're starting to see the temperatures fall off a little bit. Let's get to our local readings and temperature forecast and what's going to happen come down the pike because we do have a cold front. Oh, hey, Llama. Como Como te amas. Hey, see what I did there? Llama. Anyway. All right. So right now, temperature is mostly in the 60s to near 70. 74 currently in Del Rio. That's the exception. Otherwise, we're mostly in the 60s. 71 still st Stinson, but 60s elsewhere. I mean, pretty straightforward. It's comfortable. It's pleasant. It's wonderful outside. And it is. we will be changing by Saturday, but tomorrow we're well into the 70s again. I mean, we're talking... 77 to 78 Lavernia Elmendorf area and then look what happens on Saturday we go back down into the 50s so 70s to 50s just like that but it's going to be a brief drop because of the cold front the cold front now is basically just coming out of Canada and it's going to be flying down the plains tomorrow and it's going to make it here very early on Saturday morning it's, it's all part of that system you see up there around the Great Lakes and the Northland and the Dakotas so tomorrow sunny warm Temperatures still 70s. Once that front hits, we could have a few light showers, maybe a sprinkle or two. But oh, I think the main headline with this front is the wind. Okay, the wind is going to pick up. Yes, it'll get cold, cooler, but it's not going to be as frigid as what we've had uh, before, and especially not like what we had last week. But wind gusts will be up to about 40 miles per hour. 
We're used to that with our cold fronts this winter. So this is going to be one of those standard, just gusty cold fronts, temperatures dropping off a bit. This evening, just falling through the 60s and 50s. So 10 o'clock, 57. By midnight, we're at 50. Tomorrow, we start the day at 42 degrees. By the afternoon, again, we make it up into the mid 70s. Wall to wall sunshine, low humidity, wonderful day. Then we get into Saturday and that's when the temperatures drop. So if you're heading out to the rodeo or anywhere else, 50s and windy on Saturday, but at least we'll have some sunshine. We rebound quickly. It'll be cool on Sunday morning in the 30s, but by the afternoon we're talking 60s and then quickly back to 70 degrees. So if you don't like the breezy cooler conditions, don't worry. It's all going to be changing again quickly by Sunday and into early next week. All right, look at all, look at all these different animals here. Look, we got some young. Oh, wait, first. Whoa, who? I almost forgot. Oh, we have our winner. Jeez. And this is awesome. The winner of today's homemade thermometer, Melva Cabarubius. Melva Cabarubius. That, that is just a solid name. I love it. Anyway, congratulations to Melva. I just sent you the email a little while ago. And let's go find some of the baby animals. Where? Oh, hey, sheep. There you go. There you go, llama. You want a little? Okay, we got some little guys over here. Got some little ones. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey, you hungry? You want a little snack? A little snacky snack? There you go. There you go. There. Yep, that, that's right. That's the sweet spot. See, I try to be tricky when I come in here. I don't carry it in the hand and they all flock. You hide it in the pocket and then you just kind of casually pull a little out. No, you're really digging in there, aren't you? Casually pull it out, and then they don't just hound you right away. But our photographer, Mark, had one jumping up on him while we were doing the weather earlier. Little rascals, you little rascals. Oh, my goodness, yes. All right, so that's that's our latest from the rodeo. Of course, we get, we're airing the actual rodeo coming up shortly after this newscast, and it's a good day out here, good weather. It's not a rodeo without a cold front. That hits Saturday morning, so prepare. <laughs> I and like remember, Petting farm. Welcome everybody, young and young at heart. There you go. I like that you're basically feeding lint to the uh, goats. That was nice. They do. They do kind of eat anything. Hey. So. They do. Forecast, exactly. petting farm tips. Guy's got you covered. Yeah, he does. We'll be right back. KZ 12's Let's Rodeo San Antonio, powered by your best in Texas Ford dealers. Love that we can now say that we are just about to rodeo with all of San Antonio, and we've got David Sears, Ursula Perry getting us ready. Yeah, they are live from the ro rodeo grounds. Actually, it looks like you might be inside the AT&T Center itself. You can hear itself. it, and you can feel it. Excitement in the air. It is opening night of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. We are live here in the AT&T Center, and it is a first for San Antonio. We are going to be bringing you every event live right here on KSAT 12 throughout tonight's rodeo performance. There are 22 PRCA performances tonight. There are championship cowboys, championship cowgirls. There's bull riding. There's barrel racing. There's all kinds of fun events. There's the kids are going to be performing tonight as well. It is an exciting evening here on Channel 12. We are thrilled to do this with you. Right now, we are in an area that they call the hole of the rodeo. What it is is the heartbeat of the rodeo. The contestants are gearing up right now. You can see them walking right here. These are bull riders and bareback riders and saddle bronc riders getting their gear together for the chutes. The horses and the bulls are getting loaded up. We are right at the heartbeat of the rodeo, and it's so nice, I have to say, after a couple of years to be back in the dirt at the AT&T Center once again. We're going to be live for two hours starting at 7 o'clock. You'll see everything, and we're just thrilled to bring this home to you. Yeah, the saddle bronc riders are the ones going by us right now. You can hear the horses kicking the gates. They're excited about getting out in that arena and showing what they can do because it's always horse and rider trying to put together some points for that big ride and the announcers you can hear them right now talking those guys are going to be calling the game for you tonight they call it the rodeo game and they're going to be calling it for you tonight they're going to explain everything to you so all you got to do is sit back relax and enjoy the evening of competition here at the san antonio stock show and rodeo and then of course later on we're going to be telling you about some of the new things out here at the san antonio stock show and rodeo on the freeman coliseum a lot of things have changed that's right we're going to bring you all of those changes so when you set foot at the rodeo on the rodeo grounds, 
you're going to know exactly where everything is and what's different. And some of it really works out so well for all of us. We're up. You can see them right there. They're getting, they're getting their gear on. Is there a horse in the... Uh, yeah, you can see a horse already in the chute. So we are ready to go. Just in a few minutes, this thing's going to get started here tonight. So stay with us. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back to wrap up this newscast. And then it's live, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo here on KSAT 12. All right, Adam Kasky has fed the goats. The cowboys are ready to roll. The dirt is in place. It's time to rodeo. We're just minutes away. Let's go live to the AT&T Center in Ursula Perry and David Sears. It is time to rodeo, y'all. Stephen Byra, thanks so much. We are about to begin the event that has never happened, as far as I'm aware of, in the history of San Antonio. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is going live on your TV right now. Yeah, the Cowboys are ready. The livestock is ready to buck and brock. And we are ready. So call your friends, call your neighbors, get them in front of the TV and tell them they're never going to see any excitement like this ever again. Tonight is the night. It's the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. And then at 9 o'clock, we're going to continue the fun. Because we're going to take you outside and show you everything about the grounds at the Freeman Coliseum Rodeo Grounds. But for the next two hours, you're going to get live wall-to-wall -wall rodeo action right from the comfort of your own living room. They've dimmed the lights. The announcers are getting ready. Grand entry is going to begin. That beautiful video they show at the beginning of the rodeo. It's about to happen right now. So kick up your feet tailgate with us it's time to rodeo san antonio you ready i'm ready we'll see you back here at nine enjoy the show